Hey guys, this is Professor Abood calling from Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, and this week we are going to do Experiment 9 and 10. Experiment 9, though, is basically just balancing oxidation reduction chemistry type equations. Um, so we will do that in lab, and you guys will have time to, to run through each of those, and that way I can help you guys out with some of them. Experiment 10, however, we will be doing in lab. Um, so Experiment 10 is an oxidation reduction chemistry lab. And it says that the objective is electrochemistry is a very general term for a wide range of topics which all involve reduction reaction, uh, oxidation reduction reactions. Um, all that means is that there's electron transfer involved. The aim of this experiment is to study both the electromotive series and to determine how much hydrogen peroxide is in, this, is in household hydrogen peroxide using a titration. Okay. So let's talk about these oxidation reduction reactions because you guys probably haven't seen too many of them. Hopefully you've covered them in class. But essentially what happens is this zinc transfers its electrons to the copper, therefore becoming an ionic zinc, or a zinc 2 plus, and the copper loses its 2 plus and just becomes a, a solid copper. So what will that look like in a... Uh, in a chemical reaction, so this is a solid when it's when it doesn't have um, ions. It's very it's in a solid form. When it's an ionic, it's usually an aqueous form. You'll see the same applies for copper. When it doesn't have a an, when it's not an ion, it is in solid form. When it's an ion, it's an aqueous form. So we call oxidation when you lose electrons and reduction when you take those electrons. So notice that the the I, uh, the charge on copper has gone from 2 plus to 0 so it's reduced its charge so it's kind of a, a funky term because electrons are negative therefore reduction is actually losing uh, charge which means gaining electrons so hopefully you guys are sufficiently confused by that that you'll have some questions in class um, okay so why does this reaction take place well and that's when the electromotive series comes into play down here. So zinc is more reactive than copper. Which So see, here's zinc and here's copper. So the more reactive elements are on this side, the less reactive elements are on that side. And so what's going to happen is as you lose or as you mix these two substances, the electrons are going to go from the most reactive to the most stable configuration. So they're going to go from zinc to copper. And that's why this whole reaction occurs. And here it breaks it down into two half reactions, uh, when you lose the electrons and when you gain the electrons. Okay, so for example, lithium, the mo one of the most reactive ones, is found in lithium ion batteries because you need them to be very reactive, have a lot of energy in them. Whereas uh, copper, platinum, gold, silver are used in electric wires and computer chips because they're the most stable and they can just pass on the electrons without uh, reacting. Okay, so essentially, the first part of this is going to be the electromotive series. So we're just going to mix a bunch of different uh, substances. You're going to have separate test tubes of sulfuric acid, copper sulfate, sodium sulfate, and silver nitrate. Um, and we're going to drop some zinc into one of them and take notes of, of each result as they, it occurs because what's going to happen is some of these might dissolve, some of these might not. And then you're going to look on your electromotive series right up here to see if it matches up with what, with the most reactive, least reactive type of uh, uh, reactions. So then we're gonna fill one another four vials with copper instead of zinc, and we're gonna observe what happens. And so hopefully you will, and we're gonna write out e balanced equations for each one of these uh, reactions. The second part of the ex experiment is to determine the mass of hydrogen peroxide. So if we go up here, we're given a nice little reaction for hydrogen peroxide. So you've got MnO4 plus hydrogen peroxide going to just oxygen, which is just going to be released as a gas, and manganese, which is going to be in aqueous form. So we're going to essentially make sure, we're going to have to make sure that everything's really, really clean. So you're going to have to make sure that when you pour a little bit of water, uh, it should not beat up on the sides of the glassware. Um, and if it does, you're going to need to clean it with soap. And if it still beads up, you're going to have to scrub it. Um, you're going to obtain some 
potassium manganese oxide, I think that's what that's called. Um, but essentially just some of this solution, you're going to record what it actually, what the real concentration of, is, of it is and pour it into your burette, about four to five milliliters. Um, just to kind of clean out the, the, the flask and then empty that out. And then you're going to fill it above the zero milliliter mark. Um, we're then going to pipette some household hydrogen peroxide into it slowly until we get some sort of reaction. The first appearance of a permanent pink tinge. And so I got a nice little picture for you guys. This is kind of what it looks like. And uh, this is from Nando Sal Industries. It's an Indian company apparently. Anyway, it's uh, this is manganese sulfate. And so that's the sort of pinkish color that you're going to get. And that is basically our lab. After that, you're just going to do a lot of calculations. And don't forget that even though we did the pre-lab 9 in class, the pre-lab 10 is still going to have to be turned into me before class. All right, guys. I'll see you in class. Good luck.